compañía de gloria. A mi empower. To save. To heal. And to restore. Quicken our water by the Lord. That we may fit into a eternal purpose. Mighty ship that carries several thousands of us and we launch out to cover seven countries. When we go to France, we normally disembark because for sightseeing. And then um, I go with the party all the time because of souls and attention. So even in the midst of that pleasure, in the midst of that euphoria of enjoyment, the body won't let me go. So I walked into a very mighty supermarket. I wasn't going to buy anything. I'm just looking for a soul that I can speak to about Jesus. So I walked and I targeted a young man who was doing some shopping. I got close there and I was just touching some commodities of the shelf. Then I just extended some pleasantries. So good afternoon. Of course, you know English is usually very difficult for them to communicate. So he just managed to accept a chance of pleasantry with me. So when I asked him, did you go to church? He said, church. Oh, I used to go to church. But now I don't go to church again. Okay? Then I asked him, do you know Jesus? He said, who is he? Where does he live? I'm telling you a life experience. And he counted the people that brought the gospel to us. Jesus, where does he live? Where? where? Oh, I was sick.
are shrinking. Because of the times we in, we're in a very horrible time. And Jesus said to us, in those days are more shortening. In those days are more shortening. Not even the multitude. Not even unbelievers. Nor the prostitutes, nor the idol worshippers. See, even the very elect, they will go. It's what is brethren. In those days, I'm not shopping. Even me, look, listen to me. Even me, who is standing here, I may go. As that. So Paul said, Let him that take his turn take him. Cast not your confidence. So every moment I say, Lord, help me. Having, having begun this journey, Lord, help me, Lord. What's the times? 
If there's any, any reason why you're going to make it to the end, it is your consciousness of the time. Your consciousness and your sensitivity about the times that we live in. If you are carrying this consciousness, you cannot become an easy prey to the devil. Let's turn the Bible to Luke chapter 20. Luke 21. I'm sorry, I don't always have my emotions. When it comes to the matters of the kingdom, Luke 21. Somebody read for us from verse 25 to 28. Okay. And then shall be an Can you please give her the mic there? From verse 25. Yes. Yes, ma'am. From verse 25 to 28. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus' name. And then shall be signed to the sun, and in the night and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, makes out failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud, for the power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, the redemption draw you to the spirit. Let me begin this sharing with two questions, two very fundamental questions. The first question is, what time are we ready in? Number two, what or how are we supposed to be living our lives if you like how we conduct ourselves in a time like this, by the prescription of Jesus Christ. It's very important. Do we know what time we're in? Do we know the content? You know, everybody seems to have been familiar with where the last days, where the last days. What are the contents of the last days? What are the things the Bible, you know, told us about? And how do we contain? It is only by your understanding of the time we're living based on its content that you will now fit in into the prescription of Jesus Christ and know how to live and survive it. Because many will survive it. That is the truth about it. Many words. So I'm going to look at highlights some very, very basic things I understand. By the time that we're living, number one, the Bible prophetically describes the times that we're in as the end of times. The end of times. Whatever has a beginning, as I mentioned it. Number two. Says a time of trouble. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 7. The Bible tells us, Jesus said in the New Testament, he shall be like Jacob's trouble. Then he said, but we shall be saved. It shall be like Jacob's trouble. That's what Jesus said. Making reference. Now, let me just also take a little time to tell you. Thank you. Jacob's trouble. How God, how Jesus describes the end of time. 
that Jacob's trouble, that the trouble we're going to face in the, in the end time is like a summation of all the troubles that Jacob went through. The trouble of one man seemed to be related to the troubles of the end time. And that tells you that what Jacob went through was not a mere thing. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why Jacob had to go through that. You know, God made a covenant with Abraham. The trio, God made a covenant with Abraham. That in Isaac, he made an oath to support the covenant. Then in Jacob, he confirmed it. So the devil understanding that by Jacob, this covenant was going to be consummated. He went all out to destroy that man. And look at that. If you, if you ever have time to listen to some of the accounts of the Bible in the book of Jesha or the book of Enoch, you'll get some great details of what Jacob went through. It was trouble. Jesus said the end times, the trouble of the end times shall be like Jacob's trouble. Because the devil knows that that is the time of eventual harvest of the last seeds. That Jesus was coming to harvest. And Satan has Wow! He will never allow the last man standing to make heaven. That is his vow. Now that man is, is a strategist. Make no mistake about it. Satan is a strategist when he comes to fight. Now I'll give you a little graphic. You know, some of all we spend some time in the village. Um, a Greek fowl doesn't behave like native fowl. You know, native fowl, when they, they come, <coughs> want to mate the, you know, the, the female. The female is here. It will just start flipping from here, flipping from here. You never know this way is coming. That's how Satan comes. He fights strategically. Now, if you take some time, to look at the history, how the church has degenerated to where it is today. You don't understand what I'm talking about. It was very strategic, stylishly. But well, somehow, somehow, do you know that a child cannot really explain how she has gotten to where she is today? Do you know that? We don't know. A church that was once on fire, today has lost the fire. If you ask men of God, how did we get to where we are? They don't know, they have no explanation. That because of the subtlety of the devil, you don't understand how it was. So Jacob's trouble. Number three, the Bible tells us it shall be a perilous time, second to Moses chapter three, verse one to seven. I won't, because of time, we're very familiar with this, so I'll just go to the Congo again, straight into the main message. Perilous time. Perilous times are times of high risk. The risk in times of peril are higher. It means, therefore, that if you are going to survive as a child of God, Carry the Holy Spirit on that lonely road, you are going to take higher risk. And of course, I, I, you know, I, I was talking to one of her sisters, you know, Sacha Mai, when she was sharing with me some challenges. Then I said to her, my sister, look, let me tell you, you cannot see anyone in heaven without a scar. <laughs> you know, Jesus is going to ask her, how did you get there? Remember that man when, you know, Jesus asked them to go to the highway and get the leg, get the blood. He asked them, get everyone who's on the street, bring them in. Suddenly, the same the Lord who said, bring everyone in because those who were invited to spy the, the, the honor. And he got there and he looked at them by examination and found one man 
and he said, he called him friend. How did you get into this place? Scars because of high risk. To the experience. Roman chapter 8 tells us that when we are praying, he said, sometimes we don't know what to pray, but the Holy Spirit, you know, gives us the utterance, the groaning that cannot be uttered. That is not the groaning of pain. It's a groaning of relationship. When you come to a point of pain, you are in agony because you've been bruised from every side. Paul said, though my outward man perishes, my inward man is renewed. You, you have your heart of my battle. It's a time of distress. From every side, you are knocked down from every side. I'm sure some of you have got some experience. <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, time of distress. Distress from the church. Distress from the home. Distress from the place of your business. Distress everywhere. Why? Because Satan has recruited his personnel to go launch out against you. Distress. So it's, it's a time of distress. Now, one reason why it's very important for all of, for us to understand this thing is that look, if you lack knowledge of these realities, when they come to you, they will take you all by surprise. Because you say, I don't know why all of these things are happening. I don't know. Look, we understand. You say, I know why. And the Bible says, rejoice in all of this. You rejoice in tribulation. You rejoice in betrayal. You rejoice in lack of food. You rejoice in, you know, what have you? You rejoice in it. But if you lack understanding, you will deny it. Following that, wow, this is the story. This is the story. Part of the content of the last days, he says, shall be a time of falling away. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, please read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. <laughs> A time of falling away. Yeah, who is there? I read in Jesus. Yeah, can you take the mic and read there's a mic close to you there? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. I read in Jesus' name. In the second Thessalonians 2, verse 3 says, Let no man. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except this comes it's falling out. Hey, just read. Except oh, okay. let no one deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of prediction. Ah, thank you. This is very Some of them sleeping, or I miss it. Just like, oh, you know. 
I see some of them telling stories. I see some of those who walk away casually, very casual. They, you know, by the way they see that, you know, they are not ready to go to heaven. And it happened not only there, several places I go to minister. I say, go! This one doesn't know what is at stake in that by your soul. So one day I said to them, I said, look, whether you like it or not, I'm going to push all of you to heaven. Amen. I was so desirous to see that happen. So I'm going to push all of you to heaven. I won't let anyone go to heaven because I love them. That was the kind of love that Jesus Christ had for his disciples. He said, how love them? He loved them to the end. I love them so much. But one of the elders has said to me, Pastor, you will not push me to heaven. I will use my leg for a car in the I said, Amen. And of course, I can tell you that man is a very serious. These were old school believers. They tested the original, and he has refused to be corrupted. There shall be a falling away. Men who were once filled with the Holy Spirit, evangelical men whose voices tremble in the heart of men and women, men with their ministry, you people will humble themselves, break down in tears. He said, suddenly they'll become cosmetic. I've seen them. I'm telling you, these prophecies are real. You have probably seen some have seen them. So because of my observation, Peter said, guide the lungs of your heart. I keep myself all set. I put myself, my body is under subjection. So after I preach to others, I won't be cast away. So every moment I ask myself, what are you saying? What are you thinking? What are you doing? Where are you going to? I put myself on check because the devil does not come to show himself. Now, oh, look, let me tell you, Satan doesn't need a big hole to get hold of you. He just needs a place where his little finger can get him. Give him one little space that's enough for him. He will get a hole and take over everywhere. It's falling away. People are falling away. Men with big titles, believers. Oh, I was just sharing with them a couple of days ago. We used to have, when I was young and in faith, there was one man who was a scriptural union you know, leader, very evangelical. When this man was moving all over the place, moving all over the field, when you see him stand by the pulpit ministry, your heart will begin to, to break you because he was carrying fire. But ask me today, Falling away, but he's still in the church. He has narrowed down into politics. Narrowed down. You see him moving. He had, he had divorced his wife and remarried. He's done that. The Bible tells us. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You cannot enter heaven no man. Did you hear me? You can't enter heaven no man. <laughs> you can't enter heaven. Heaven is not a place to enter where you are just no man, just dressed up and all. No, it is where you enter that you are restored. But here you are in a battleground. What? Men who are who are in the battlefield, they are not they are not conscious of their dressing. A lot of people are too conscious of themselves in the church, so they can't even worship God. They can't dance, they can't worship God, they can't lift up their head. They are too full of themselves. Not me, cut me out. Because when I come before God present, I have no respect for you. I won't respect your opinion. I won't respect what you are thinking about me because the day he came for me, you are not there. Hallelujah. You were in there. It was him and me. There was no third person. So why would I respect you to offer him my worship and my praise? I don't need your opinion. His delays in me are unique. So you can alter it. Not even my 
even my wife. It has to be Mary. She be falling away. Then he said, it shall be a time of lawlessness. <laughs> lawlessness. My teacher to 24 verse 12. He said, Iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity. Uh, let, look, years back, I got saved by the grace of God. Oh, this is 2019, I suppose. I got saved. 31 years. August 9th. I've been 31 years in the Lord. I can tell you that by, by every standard, I have bad professorship in so many, so many fields in the ministry. I've seen this within those 31 years. I've seen this. I just got. Now, when I did my, my bright prize, when I did the bright prize, Wife. I was working as a salesman, just finished from school, and I got a job. We loaded the truck. The whole pickup loaded with alcohol. This small boy doesn't have anything to do. He's coming to marry. Coming to marry such a small boy. They loaded drinks. There was drink everywhere. We finished it. There was March 1988. By okay, March 1988. Oh no, 89. Yeah, 89. I think 89. Or 88. Now, by November, we had a wedding. You know, the wife that my wife was working, she needed to walk out to far to the city where I was. I was just about probably about six months old. Listen to this, very important. Then I'll come to this. Six months old in the Lord. When I give my, when the Lord encountered me on God's night, very unique, I will never forget it. August, September, October, November, three months, three months in the Lord. That was my wedding. I've not been taught, I've not been discipled. Because we know that the Holy Spirit designed us in such a way. That even when no one teaches you, you will know what is wrong and what is right. So no man is without excuse. Or no man is with excuse. You have no excuse. Because by nature, God designed man by nature to perceive within him what is right and what is wrong. So I knew that alcohol was a wrong spirit. So I said, there will be a bottle of alcohol at the reception of my wedding. I was three months old in the world. I was such a very radical man. He drinks, he smokes, he has quite a number of them. But I said, this is about me. A bottle of alcohol will get into this hall. Mm. To God's glory, it was so. I said, if you want to drink alcohol, drink it if you are outside, not inside the hall. So my Lord came, his boots, cardboard, filled up with alcohol. They were drinking alcohol it's outside. Never came in. Brother, because we know, Paul said, I know whom I have believed. When you know whom you have believed, you must stand for him and stand with him, then he can declare his prayer for you. We will become so dicey. One leg in, one leg out. God said, I don't know where you belong. This is a betrayer. You can betray me anytime. I can't get on with you. Lawlessness. It's a iniquity shall abound. Over time, we have seen this thing calibrate, calibrate, calibrate today. It has reached its brim. And I told them in 1984, when I began to minister on eschatology, I said, Look, before Christ will come, everything that we know that is evil, the devil will surpass. We never ever imagine that will happen as evil, the devil will 
to your papa. A young lady, young girl, was impregnated by two boys. Two boys were pregnant. And this girl got pregnant. They were framing her, she got pregnant. You know what? They said this girl was her boss in pregnancy. She said no. They took her to a place, got this girl, naked her one leg and one leg, and they put her inside of her. To carry out their portion physical. That's it. It happened. It was on the newspaper. You will never imagine that. What the devil, Jesus said, iniquity shall abound, and the love of many will waste cold. So, what you see, go on outside, right inside the church. You are saying this, you never imagine betrayal of brethren. Conspiracy have been a victim of this. If I share with you what I've suffered in the church, you will never imagine it will happen even in the world. Jesus says so. And if he says so, believe him. Because he knows he can for the very beginning. <sighs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 24. Verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. So I can touch what I was going to talk to this time. It's time on the school. Lawless, all of them. Lawless. Matthew 24 verse 4. Are you there? I read in Jesus' name. I read in Jesus' name. Okay, just look at And Jesus answered and said unto yeah. them, Take heed that no man deceive you. <laughs> he said, They were asking him, Tell us when will they, when will their coming be? When will their kingdom come? The disciples were so anxious about that. He looked at them intently. He looked at them intently. And said, be careful. Take heed that no one deceives you. It was very important, very critical. He said, look, before I get on to start telling you about what I've been, let me tell you about the deception. Because many will call me my name. And today, you know, I came now. Recently this week, this few days back. They went and they brought one man. They said, Jesus has come to kill you. I'm not sure. It was online. Yes. And they came and danced. And they said, Jesus has come to the, to the, to step his feet on the soil of Kenya. And he just dressed like the Jesus feet. And dressed and was just dancing and dancing. Oh, yes. But yesterday, they said the Kenya women have uh, sent him out. They sent their Jesus out. <laughs> Deception have come, men of reason to say, I am the Christ Jesus. Say, Take care, be careful because deception will come. It will come in such a psychedelic way, hard drying, you know, hard propelling, you know, just they will come so, so, so packaged and so garnished that you, you are tired of ways be careful. It's a time of deception. Then he said, in chapter 21, where we read verse 16, we didn't read them. Okay, let's take that. Look at the 21, verse 16 and 17. Look 21, verse 16 and 17. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look Look 21, verse 17. It says, And you shall be betrayed forth by parents. You shall be betrayed by your parents. And by brethren. By brethren. And kinsfolk. And your kinsfolk. And friends. And friends. And <laughs> 17. And ye shall be hated of all men. Oh, they were hated. Ah, yes. He said so. And it's gone. <laughs> oh, my God, Lord, I thank you. I just give you praise. This is me standing today. That part is a lovely part. Not many have found that. We betrayed our parents, their brethren. Even your pastors can betray you. Because they did. They did betray you. It's part of the content of the last things. 
to come to Zulayah chapter 2 verse 9. So come to Zulayah chapter 2 verse 9. Praise the Lord. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Even he whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying warning. You know what they call lie? The Bible describes the lie as wonder. Lying wonder. Such a magnitude that you can't dissect it. You can't find a way to fault it. It will be watertight, airtight. Lie. I used to have one extended relative. You know. And um, I, I lived with him when I finished school, I slept with him. He said, he said, I don't think to lie. He said, doesn't think to lie. Once he opens his mouth, they lie. And when they lie, both his facial appearance and the way, you will never have any way. And then you resume to that. He said, I don't think to that. So he's the pastor now. I don't know if that spirit has left him. <laughs> Lying wonders. So today on the pulpit, we've seen those prophets in quotes. <laughs> All kinds of genes that they come with to deceive innocent members of the congregation. Lying ones. Say to come. Now ask me, what kind of theological school will you attempt to escape all this mess? What kind of gym will you go to that exercise to gather a lost sick to escape all of these, all of these snares, if not the help of God? You understand what I'm talking? Where will you go to learn how to escape? How many of them will you have the stamina to escape if God does not help you? If God does not help you, how? Now in Luke chapter 21, now let me read this read from Luke chapter 21 from verse 34, I think verse 34, Luke 21 from verse 34. Yes. Please give her the mark. Give her the mark to you. Give her the mark. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke 21, verse 34 to 36. Praise the Lord. He said, Take heed to yourself. Be careful with yourself. Least that any time your heart be overcharged with sufficient and drunkenness yes. and cares of this life. So that they so that they come upon your other ways. For as snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Praise the Lord. Now, there are a lot of things to say there, but let me just highlight my concern. He said, for it shall come as a snare upon how many? Upon all that dwell on the face of the earth. <laughs> ah, thank God for those of you who are in Europe. But I, I must tell you something. Something the Holy Spirit began to say to me and began to preach about it. You know, this technology had gone too familiar and in the Western world before we ever narrowed down to our region, into the third world. So in time, now let me ask you, what is the meaning of it? In your little, little um, crude description, how can you look at the world internet? How best can you can you explain internet? It looked to me that internet can crudely be described 
as a net that have brought all the nations inside of you. International net. Does it make any sense? Today, you can just, you know, when we were just talking about those things, you just see, you know, people were, we're just, it doesn't really make much sense. You don't hear someone, now I say, are you on net? Are you in the, are you in the net? What is net? Trump. And I tell you that this net has brought all of us in. We are not trapped in the net. So the good, the bad, and the ugly right inside it. So when you lack wisdom, this net will destroy the values of the kingdom that he that existed in. The net is so designed to target you. So why were they here before we came? Myself and my brother Dominic were just on our own. Then these are little children, they had um, their phone and some of these, what they call the dummy or um, program voices. A lady was, they were communicating with the voice, you know, programming the phone. And um, the neighbor asked, what is your name? This boy, Isaac, said, I'm a pastor. Call me pastor. He said, what is your name? He said, Peter. Call me pastor Peter. Then he said, okay, when next I want to call you, I'll call you pastor Peter. That's the latest boy program. Then this boy inquisitively asked her, as the boy said, do you know Jesus? Are you a Christian? I was waiting anxiously to get the response. This machine diverted the question. The boy asked again, do you go to church? Are you a Christian? Do you know Jesus? For where? Why? Because the next, Jesus said, if the world hates you, know that they hated me. The world hates the Lord. So everything they produce and put in your hand is to draw you away from the Lord. So it will take you wisdom to ask the Lord, this thing is meant to destroy me, but I'm going to use it to save others. So our children can sit down and spend time and forget about food. Forget about the values, the original value that brought us to where we are. They will sit down with their phone and they will scroll and they will chat it and where, what is happening gradually you have been drawn away. And today you are struggling to have your children back to yourself. Jesus said, It shall come as a snare upon all those. No one will be spared, but yet some people will be saved. He said, What? Now, when Satan declared his war, it was a full blown war. We took it for granted. We said, You know me now. Satan didn't mean he meant it from the world. He meant it. You think he didn't mean it? He meant it. So let's go for that. Sorry, sometimes this thing is so provoking that I don't know. I just said, God, help us, Lord. Do you know why? There's a thin line between eternity here and the other eternity. A thin line. One step we have entered. One step. One step the chapter is closed. No reconciliation, nothing. One step. So it's a matter of great concern. So have a look at those contexts. What is this prescription of Jesus Christ to us? That book, uh, Rapture of Manon. If you look at it back there, when I wrote that book, that book was not in any way meant for church, for unbelievers or church growers. It's for the elect. It's for the elect. Because God impressed me, look, it is for the elect. Because if you look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, when he began to, it was Dealing with the Pharisees, the scribe, 
and all of that, dealing with so many issues, all the controversial issues, you know, that came his way. He gave his time, and he was telling a woe until he wore to use crap. You, you know, you are not getting to the kingdom, and you are stopping others. And all. But when it comes from chapter 24, his focus changed. Chapter 24, his focus changed. It was now delight. So that's the body comfort. I have great concern for unbelievers. But my passionate concern and cry is for the elect. Because if the world gets lost, those who are saying yes, Lord, let him have them. It will be a tragic end that even we who said Lord, he never found us. So how do we keep those? I mean, secure. So the important thing to establish now, the people that these prescriptions are meant for. I'm going to highlight my 10 points of prescription that the Lord has given to us in these last days. I know it's for the light. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And then I basically open to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Matthew 24, verse 31. Matthew 24, verse 31. Matthew 24, verse 31. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four wings, from one end of heaven to the other. Hallelujah. I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Say my grace. I am in that number. I am in that number. I am in that number. Say. Watch. Matthew 
24, verse 42, 25, verse 30, all of them are saying, he said, watch therefore that you are not taken by surprise. For no one knows the hour when the Son of Man will come. Watch, 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 watch. People are not watch. Believers are not watchful. Now let me give you a graphic illustration of what happened in Genesis. Genesis chapter 6, if you read from 14, 15, 16, when God asked Noah to, you know, to build the ark. And then um, it was an ark that was going to save, you know, those willing followers, you know, from the flood. An ark designed to, to resist flood. But he said to him, make rooms and make windows. You read the Bible. Make rooms, but make a window. They didn't say windows. That's how important what fullness is. The rooms he asked him to put in place, he knew that it was only Noah and his household that would be saved. But he said, He's a God of justice, God of fairness. He will only provide opportunity. If any man we decide, let there be a room. It will be justified because no one will accuse him and say it was only a space for Noah and his family. We would have entered, but we have no place. God said to Noah, make rooms. If they change their mind, look, animals became wiser. Animals walked into on their own accord and enter. All the animals enter. But human beings that God made his own image and likeness, they became so, so foolish. So repent. He said, make window. Make one window. And of course, you know, significantly, when Noah had entered, it was only through the window that he watched, observed the garden of the cloud. God will always look at us. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Everything is peace for me. I allow everything as a means of message to me, including, including Lisa. Now one day, I went on a missionary to the one very river land here. So in the morning, there was no toilet. So I, I had to get inside the bush. The missionary told me, get inside the bush. I got help and say, so while I was truly inside the bush, I, I stopped. Okay, after I got that I was coming back. I was admiring the wonders of God. Every leaf, the lizard, the bears, I see God's glory, God's beauty. I said, I'm just leave. You know the leaf. That's the leaf we call it, touch me not. Once you touch the leaf, it will fall. I said, how wonderful I got this. So I said, okay, let me check how long. It takes this leaf to spread out again. I wanted to see whether it just by random timing. So I touched it. And he said, Don't touch me. Before. So I looked at my time and observed. It's only two minutes. It opened. I touched again. This God is awesome. Oh God, He is beyond perfection. I'm just admiring the mountains, the mountains, you know, of those things. Oh God, my Father, why will I not see this God behind all these wonders? Why? What is in this world? Really, what is in this world that will keep me from seeing this God? What is in this world that will keep me from beholding the God behind this, this awesome world that was in this world? So I allow everything to speak. Everything. Because you are watchful. Now, let, let me tell you this. It's good to pray. Believers of this end time, they are prayer warriors. But most of us are not watchful. So when you pray without watchfulness, you pray without understanding. It was not by mistake that the Lord said, oh, watch. Then pray because your prayer is going to have values based on the understanding of the thing you are saying. What are you praying about? You just make up things to pray, and then not things that you want the Lord shows to you. Watch that pray. Is this no prayer? I watch. And God 
Job is perfect in his arrangement. Watch and pray. So the first prescription is watchfulness. Then he, he wanted to sound it, to resound it to the disciple. He said, look, I said to all of these people, for you, what I said to them, I said to you, watch. It's not to watch what you call video and African match. People see them and watch all kinds of rubbish. Watch. And yeah, they get deluded. Number two, also in charge of the prayer. Of course, it's a chapter. Thank God for those of us that have been coming online. I'm sure we have really dealt with the issue of prayers. And I tell you, it has I become more conscious of the things we have shared together. In the time I need that to pray, I become more conscious because God has really helped us for this series of time. We look about how to pray. Prayerfully. Prayer with understanding. Prayer with body. Prayer with passion. Prayer with revelation. Prayer. That's number two. Prescription number three. Oh God. Thankfulness. Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Oh my God. Can we read that place? So you can read here everywhere. Matthew 24, verse 45, down to about 47. Matthew 20, 24, 45. 24, 45. Okay, let me read. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Listen. Whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. To give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so. 47. Brother 47. Okay, something is. Now, if, if. Yes, go ahead. Very, I say unto you. Yes. That he shall make him ruler over all his kings. Okay, the next verse. But if that evil servant. Yes. But if that evil servant. If that evil servant shall say in his heart. Oh, listen to me, brethren. Oh, God. He won't say to you. He won't say to his members. But in his heart, he has determined to manipulate his members to use them to make a name, use them to make money. In his heart, and he begins to say some other things and, and masculate the word of God and begin to design the word of God upside down because he has become an evil servant. Now, what did he say? If that evil servant and shall begin to smite his fellow servant. The smiting is not physical, it's just what I'm doing this crap. When you rob people of their godly relationship, the intimacy that the Holy Spirit has bridged between a believer and his maker, you somehow you drain them of those intimacy. You have smitten them badly. He said, and to eat and drink with drunkard. What will happen? The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall call him a son and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Is there a problem? Is there a problem? Faithfulness. Who then is wise? That what God has placed in your hands to serve in such a man, to serve, you will you will renege because one sister talked to me about somehow. Because somebody asked me. Well, let me tell you something. Look, everything matters before God. Excuses 
with thee that God will not consider. He will because everything shall be revealed on that day. He says, Paul and wrinkle and blame me with disqualifying. You drop your responsibility because someone does not treat you like a lord. Faithfulness. I've said to the Lord, Father, help me. Help me not to change. Let nothing influence me. Lord, help me. The understanding you have given to me to walk with you, Lord, I want to improve on it. Prescription will be faithful. In the midst of these times, number four, be careful. Luke 24, verse 34. Now, we don't bother to read that, but I'd like us to read Matthew 7, 13 and John 17, verse 14. Verse 15. Matthew 7, verse 13. Matthew 7, verse 13. I read in Jesus' name. Yes. Enter ye in path. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. Okay. John chapter 17, verse 15. John 17, 15. Say you are in the world, but you are not of the world. I'm sure that's that's why. I pray that I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. Jesus prayed for us. You know what he says here? He said, with utmost carefulness, stay in, but not stay. You know that's what he just said? Stay in the world, but not let the world stay in you. Be careful on this path you are trading because the road is narrow and it is difficult and only few are there. That's the encouragement. Anytime I come for a meeting, you know, Jesus knew the end from the beginning. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. So once we are two, he said, not for me. Because anywhere you have a lot of if you believe, I run away. Did you hear me? A lot crowd gathered a thousand, and you hear that three thousand are getting a lot of crowd. Who would wish three thousand? Give way to it. I say things. Be careful. Now, this last day, the road to heaven has become narrower than what it used to be. It has become narrower. Why? Because the church system seems to have widened it, tolerated so many things. So if you are going to survive, you can't go like this. You have to go silent. Oh my God. You have to go silent. It's narrower now. I come on my man. As you go out, 
those who were saved, baptize them and bring them, teach them to observe all things. Now they came and they knocked down the pillars. Why did the Lord as everybody coming? Coming when they come in, we will change them. When they came, they changed us. That's why the church has become so worthy. They come to change. I was telling them this year, and the church when I was at Mesu Camino, I just dropped, giving the bread, and suddenly I this one girl. You know, of course, we are busy with the community. You are not really too observant because you are attending to them. And then, somehow, something just made me look at one girl. She knelt down like this, and her hand was open to me. Then I looked at her eyes. Then I saw something that put to them. Then I asked her, Is this your eyes? I looked at it. She has carried the sick and to a <laughs> She was never a member of her church. That was the first day she came. That was the last day she came. What did she come to? She came to test whether we're going to tolerate her. If we tolerate her, because in every gathering of people, even what you call sin, there are still people, unbelieving believers there. They are looking for an opportunity to widen the door so they could take. If she has stayed one, two, three days, some of the people within our member congregation who will see hungry of the things outside but because they are constrained, they will say, okay, since Pastor of Allah this, let me try. Before you know, they will pollute and contaminate the place. We need to be careful. Number five, purity. 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 Matthew 5, 48, I've, I've, I've mentioned that before. First John chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. First John chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. First John chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. First John, I read in Jesus' name. First John chapter 3, 1, 2 and 3. Beloved, now are the Am I right, sir? Yeah, yeah, below. Below, now are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Prescription, prescription purity. In war and outside act of purity. It's one of the prescription. If you're going to survive to see the Lord, He said, We don't know what we shall become, but one thing we know that when He appears, we shall become like Him because we shall see Him face to face. But how will you become like Him when you are like the world? <laughs> purity, 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 purity. Let I give me names. Oh, yes. What does it take away from me? Look, my sister was just talking about extra miles. I was just, you know, smiling and groaning inside of me because I've let go of so many things. They've taken my tummy, they've taken my coat, they've taken everything. But there is something I refuse them to take. That is my salvation. Take everything. But this one, don't touch it. You can't, you can't fringe on it. He said, no go in. He said, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Number six, I'm running. Boldness. Boldness. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 to 37. If you deny me, if you are ashamed to confess me before me, I'll be ashamed to confess you before my father. Boldness. The boldness to talk about Jesus. The boldness to declare for him. The boldness to show Kenzie wherever you are. The boldness not to pretend. I tell you a little story of what happened some, some years back. I was still young in the faith. And uh, you know, I was busy. There was one uh, doctor who was a manager in a very big company, Delta C company, C complex. And uh, where he, he lost his job, so we became partners in business. So one day he took me to his friend who was going to travel to US. And he took me to his friend who wanted to give us some job. And then, um, you know, when we got there, 
in this course, and he said to introduce me to Linda, to be living, and that CY will be the one to prospect and everything. So he left. Yet I told him. So the young man said, okay, um, what do you want to help us? He's going to help us to secure projects from the state government. That was his part. Then I, I own a car. Very small. I started business with a small car, Volkswagen. But I used to travel with boss. It's you know, the state boss, data, data line from Orita Sabah. And every time I must preach. Every time I'm in that boss, I must preach. Sometimes I just sit where on my seat and I preach. On this particular day, listen to this story. I got there and I paid for the ticket. I got into the bus and I sat down, ready to do my usual preaching. And all of a sudden, I noticed this man coming towards into the park. Something told me if this man enter here, don't preach. Because he will not know that you are holy, holy, he may not give you that business. I'll be very honest with you. So if this man recognize you and you say, ah, this fool will not do business with us and all of that. I look around and say, the boss is already filled up. Just a few spaces. People are still on queue. So before it will get to a storm, the boss is filled up. So you won't be in this boss. But I will deceive myself. I never knew that his, his colleague had come to buy tickets for both of them. So he just came. After prison through with some person, this man fell into the boss. I said, today is problem. This man sat down. And obviously, I know he, won't, he probably may not recognize me, but I already told myself he must recognize me. So the boss started. When he got to this place where I normally start my administration, I was just three with him. I said, no, something simple. I said, no, what can I say? When I get to that place, look at that tree. When we get to that place, I'll start with you. In the twinkling of an eye, we were there. Start preaching. I said, no, when we get to another place, I will preach. And God made it that nobody, sometimes some people used to preach, God select everybody in the bus not to preach. It was, it was horror for me. I passed the first milestone, passed the second milestone, passed the third milestone, the lion in the road. The lion roared. I said, Don't oh, help me, business. So I said to Satan, Because you have done this to me, I will disgrace you. So I stepped out from my, from my seat. I went to the middle of the boat and I held the rail. And I said, Praise the Lord. So I lifted up my voice and I raised a worship song. And I began to preach. And I preached. I said, Satan, you're a liar. I preached with all my heart. But listen to what happened. This story hasn't come yet. When I was done, one man, a Jehovah Witness and a Muslim, they sat together. And they said, we have a question. Of course, you know, they always ask controversial questions. And they said, we have a question for you. I wasn't ready for question. But I just couldn't tell them I'm not interested. So they ask that question about the deity of Jesus and God because that's one place they always have the problem. When they were done with the question, as I opened my mouth to speak, somebody from the front of the board said, Brother, see that, let me take it off. It was the man. It was the man. Brother, See that, let me take it up. I never knew that this man was an evangelist in the church of God mission. Brethren, God tests us. So he engaged them. He was, of course, I was still a young convert. This man was already a matured man in this. He, so he engaged them and he not them down with all the controversy. But battered all their questions, and this man began to minister after administration. He raised praises. We began to praise in the world. We began to worship. Then he said, This is a mobile church. Let's take offering. Is there any, any full time minister here? We raised an offering and again we gave it to somebody in the world. Hallelujah. Boldness. Jesus said, If you deny me, I will deny you. 
Most of us have denied the Lord because of mere circumstances. Number seven, bear your cross. Luke 14, 27. I will not say much here because if I get into this, we will have problem today. Maybe before, before we leave this conference, something could bring me to talk about this. Bear your cross. So let me just tell you, bear your cross. Let me not go into that. <laughs> let me not go spark or something that will take us another two hours. Bear your cross. One of the precision is that there's a cross that the Lord has given to you. Carry the cross very well. Carry it joyfully. Number eight. Oh. <laughs> Number eight. Holiness. Holiness. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one. Having these promises, oh God. Having these promises, let us purify, cleanse ourselves from all. Let us purify from all filthiness in and out. What promise? If you go to chapter 6 from verse 14, 16, 17, 18, God said, What fellowship has unbelievers with believers? What, what relationship has life and, and bear there? He said, Come out of them, then I will be your father. Haven't explore all of these verses. Chapter 7, he said, have the promises that you have been adopted. If you are going to remain with me, purify yourself from all feelings, holiness. Faith of Solomon, chapter 4, verse, verse 7, and Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. As much as the lies will do, be at peace with all men and all of that. Holiness is on is an undeniable um, you know, requirement that the law. Number nine, constant expectation of his coming. Constant expectation. Hebrew chapter 9, verse 28. I realize that most times we have we have married ourselves to verse 27. For it is appointed unto my words to die after that come judgment. For read verse 28 and see verse 28. And to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without seed unto salvation. You know, one of the translations says, To them who eagerly. The eagerness of the expectation. We see how it is. You know, some people have thought that Jesus, we, we just joined them to say, Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming. They have lost the eagerness. That, that desperation, that, you know, inquisitiveness in them, that the Lord will come, the Lord will come. They have lost it. But I know that he that promised, though it tarries, surely it will come. Amen. Surely it will come. Holiness. Constant expectation. Let me constant expectation. Then the last steadfastness. Steadfastness. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 37. Second Corinthians 15, verse 58. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. Hebrews 3. Verse 14. Let's read Hebrews 3 14. That's the only scripture we'll read here. Hebrews 3 verse 14. For we have become partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our continent, <laughs> steadfast to the end. Look at it. For we have become partakers of Christ. If, if, conditional, conditional, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. That's the only way we have become. Brethren, I've seen brethren who were born in, born in, born in, born in the Lord. But with time, the fire began to burn. Today, they have become religious. 
So I put myself on the scale from time to time. I measure the parameters of what I was and what I am now. Because as I grow more in the law, I'm supposed to be having more of the revelation and the knowledge of God that will improve and increase my relationship and knowledge of it. And of course, become very evidential in the way that I handle the things of the kingdom and the way I respond to the word of God. So I should be better now than when I was. So you see, if you're holding on, because I, I want to tell you that those of you who did not come to the Lord by just utter call. If you have a story, there's a storyline of how you came, you know that when that thing happened, it's like the whole world should just go. You don't need to have anything to do with the world. When it happened, I said, Lord, what, what am I doing here? I just wanted to go to heaven. It was born everywhere. I'll go to Lagos and go, and a friend of mine said, Johnny, I want to go and buy some. We went before you know I could not be ten. I just anywhere I go, I was just speaking to the world. I was ministering. But that, that's exactly what the Lord explained. I should hold on to it now if I want to be a partaker of his holiness. I live for Jesus. Day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus. Hey. One more time, I live for Jesus. Day after day, I live for Jesus. Let standard that precedes this, this message is in that book, Rapture Man. When you take your time to read, I God used my experience at my side to relate to me the holiness standard to make rapture. Is there? So I'm not going to go into it. Come just give thanks to the Lord. Let's appreciate him for his faithfulness. Let's honor him. For what he did for us. I call this is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to be all his glorious face. Speaking you out from the rubbles. Thank you. Ask the Lord for grace to finish. The grace to finish. That's what we need now. The finishing anointing. The finishing anointing. Thank you, Father. Pastor Jeff, please come and pray for us. Praise the Lord. What a powerful ministration. What a wonderful ministration. When I